Welcome to the first part of the All Plan Quick Start lesson, Basement, where we will cover the creation of the basement. What awaits you in this lesson? In the first part, we will copy the imported site plan together, set it to the 1 to 100 scale, and fittingly slide it under our planned model. All Plan users do this every day in about 60 seconds. In the second part, we will create the exterior basement walls, the supporting floor slab, and the ceiling above the basement in 3D. All plan users need about another 60 seconds to do this in practice. Before we begin with modeling the basement, we need to copy and rename the drawing file on which we have imported the site plan. To do this, I open the building structure, right click on the drawing file 500 site plan and select the item copy from the context menu. And because I want to reinsert the copy into the same structural level, I right-click on this and select Insert Under. In the following dialog, I specify on which target drawing file I would like to copy the drawing file 500 site plan, and I decide on the drawing file 501. After clicking on OK, all plan creates the copy. So that I can keep track later, I right-click on the drawing file 500, click on Rename, and add the word Original and name the drawing file 501 in the same way in the working copy of the site plan. We will always leave the original site plan on drawing file 500 unchanged and we now continue to work with the working copy on drawing file 501. To do this I enable the drawing file 501, turn off the drawing file 500 and click on close. Since the imported site plan PDF has the scale 1 to 500, we will now enlarge the site plan in all plan by a factor of 5 so that it fits to the 1 to 100 scale in which we want to create the model. Ensure that the role of architecture is now set in the action bar. I now click on the resize function and briefly check whether factor is set in the toolbar that now appears. Now take a look at the dialog line at the bottom edge. Whenever you have started a function, all plan corresponds with you here, so to speak. No matter where you are within a started function, you will always be able to read here what all plan expects from you next. You will be guided through a function here with the dialog line. All plan would now like to know what should be resized next. This means that we must highlight the site plan. To do this, we can either draw a box around the entire site plan with the mouse or simply press Ctrl and A at the same time on the keyboard. This is one of many Windows shortcuts that also work in AllPlan. A in this case stands for All. AllPlan now highlights everything, that is the entire site plan, in the red detection color and a look at the dialog line tells us that as the next fixed point, we should next click anywhere in the drawing file from where the resizing is to occur. To do this, I simply click on the lower corner of the site plan. A factor along x-axis is now suggested in the dialog line, namely 2. This 2 is already highlighted and I now enter the desired number 5 on the keyboard and confirm the entry with the Enter key. The dialog line then also suggests the factor 5 to me for the Y direction and I confirm this with the Enter key on the keyboard. I do the same thing with the factor of 5 for the Z direction. All plan has now resized the site plan and I exit the function with the Escape key. I use the F5 key in order to now view the full enlarged image. When elements are resized in All plan, then their text is not taken into consideration. This is intentional. However, since we also want to resize the text to the size appropriate for the scale of 1 to 100 in this case, we activate the labeling task in the action bar and in the action bar start the function Resize Text. In the dialog line, All Plan now asks for the elements to be resized and we again simply highlight all elements with the key combination Control and A. This function now acts on text and that is also why only texts are highlighted in red. In the dialog line, we enter the factor of 5, confirm this with the Enter key, and exit the function with the Escape key on the keyboard. You will find the status bar at the bottom in All Plan. 
You should also see the default status bar 1 to 100 in your all plan in the status bar and the site plan, as well as the site plan text now fit to this scale. After resizing the site plan, we will now move it. This is a process that also occurs frequently in practice. For example, this happens if you have already begun with the entry of a design idea for a plan in all plan before you have imported the site plan. Open the building structure, enable the drawing file 111 basement practice drawing file and ensure that the drawing file 501 is active in the background, that is, that it's yellow. Exit the building structure with close. To the bottom left in the drawing you'll see two extension lines. They're set in the default construction line color. You can show all possible elements in all plan as a construction line. A construction line has the peculiarity that it's not printed. It's good to know, if you draw a box around these two lines and display the properties of these two highlighted lines in the properties palette, you can see the check mark for construction line. A construction line always has specially preset format properties. That's why the first three format properties are greyed out and cannot be modified. This is intentional in the construction line. In order to now move the site plan to the right location in this example, I will use the direct object modification. This means that I will not begin with selecting a function, in this case the move function, but rather I will start by highlighting everything with the key combination Control and A, holding the mouse over both extension lines, scrolling closer to these, then removing both extension lines from the selection by clicking once with the control key depressed and displaying the whole image again with the F5 key. I now have visual control over whether I have selected all of the elements to be moved, namely only these. I can tell at a glance that everything is right because everything is highlighted in red with the exception of both extension lines. I now hold the mouse over the selections that are to highlight the upper right corner of the building and scroll closer. I hold the cursor right on the inner right upper corner, note do not click, only hold, and an entry box appears with a couple of useful functions that are useful in this situation. I click on the move function and because I have accessed this function at an exact point of intersection of two lines, Allplan now knows that I would like to move something, what I would like to move, and from which point I would like to move it. I scroll out of the drawing, scroll over both extension lines close to the elements, and simply left-click on my target point, the point of intersection of both extension lines. Using the F5 key, I put the entire image back and see that the site plan is now at the desired location, congruent to the point of intersection of the extension lines.